everyone. I'm in a robe. These, these are cinnamon buns. The best cinnamon buns. Let's make the cream cheese frosting. In a small pot, I have one package or eight ounces or 250 grams of cream cheese. I've chopped it up a little bit. To the cream cheese, I've also added six tablespoons of butter. You can use salted or unsalted. I always use salted because I like the extra flavor. I'm gonna turn the stove on to medium heat. All I wanna do is just slightly start melting the cream cheese and butter. Then I'll whisk it up. Put that in your pot and slightly melt it. It's done. Take it off the heat. Whisk it up. It's beautifully smooth. No lumps or bumps. I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. One and a half cups of powdered sugar or icing sugar. I'll dump in half the amount, mix it in, and then stir in the rest. Beautiful. You don't need anything fancy to make a perfectly smooth cream cheese frosting. Cover it up, stick it in the fridge, and forget about it until your cinnamon buns have finished baking. I've turned my oven on to warm, about 150 degrees. All I want to do is wait for that light to turn off and then I'll turn the oven off. I'll show you why a little bit later. I've lined my 9x13 pan with parchment paper. At least I think it's a 9x13 pan. It could be an 8x12. Use the longest pan that you have. We're making 12 cinnamon buns. Let's make the filling. The filling is super simple. In my bowl, I have 3 quarters of a cup softened butter. You can use salted or unsalted whatever you like. You don't want to melt the butter, just have it soft. One cup of lightly packed brown sugar. I like using darker brown sugar. You can use any type of brown sugar that you like. Two and a half tablespoons of cinnamon and a half of a teaspoon of salt. This is what makes this filling extra delicious. Mix it all together. Done. Let's get the dry ingredients together. Today, I'm using quick rise yeast, which could also be marketed as rapid rise or instant rise. We are not using dry activated yeast today because dry activated yeast requires proofing, also requires the dough to rise twice. Quick rise or instant rise or rapid rise only requires the dough to rise once, saving quite a bit of time. You don't have to proof this yeast. I like using the little packages, which is two and a quarter teaspoons. I find that it keeps the yeast fresh. If you're using a jar, keep it in the freezer. The yeast will last longer that way. For the dry ingredients, two and a quarter teaspoons quick rise yeast, one teaspoon of salt, one third of a cup of sugar, four cups of bread flour. Bread flour has more protein in it and it makes the cinnamon buns so much softer. Of course you can use all-purpose flour, your cinnamon buns won't be as soft. Whisk it all together. Let's get the wet ingredients together. For the wet ingredients, I have a half of a cup of butter, two eggs, and one cup of milk. All I'm going to do is wait for this butter to melt, take it off the heat, and then add the milk and the eggs and whisk everything up together. The butter melted. Let's combine the wet and the dry ingredients together. The wet ingredients are basically room temperature or lukewarm. I find that this helps activate the quick rise yeast and gives it just a little bit of a boost. Mix it up. You may find that the dough is sticking just a little bit to the sides of the bowl 
and it might feel a bit tacky, but this is exactly what you want. We don't want to add too much flour to this dough. I'm going to knead it for eight minutes. I'm not even going to flour the work surface. If you find that your dough is really, really sticking to the countertop, then add a little bit of flour. That will be okay. But try not to add too much extra flour. It's been eight minutes. It's a bit of a workout, but it's worth it. The dough feels very elasticy, soft, and buttery. It's ready to be rolled. It's time to roll the dough out into a rectangular shape. Just do the best you can. to know exactly how large my rectangle of dough is. It's 19 inches long by 16 inches wide. Of course, you don't have to make it that size. Just get it to be as big as you can get it without it being too thin. Let's slather the dough with the filling. Simply take your filling mixture, blob it on, and spread it all over. Let's roll it up. I like to roll from the longest side. All I do is pull the dough out and tuck it in, rolling it onto itself. I do that all along until I can start rolling it a little bit easier. You want as many spirals in your cinnamon buns as you can possibly get. Just do the best you can. Try to keep your sides tucked in and neat. That will make the end cuts much cleaner and you'll have a much more full-sized bun. Pulling the dough in towards yourself and over. Give it one last shape and tuck and pull. Make sure it's nice and even all the way across. My log is 19 and a half inches long. How long is your log? Cut your log in half. I like using a serrated knife for this. I find it works a little bit easier. Now cut your half of a log in half again. Do the same, and then cut each quarter into three even pieces. Place your rolls in your prepared pan. Cover with a towel or plastic wrap and place them to rise in your pre-warmed oven for 45 minutes. See you in 45 minutes. It's been 45 minutes. Take the cinnamon buns out of the oven and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. The oven is hot and it's ready. It's time to bake these beautifully risen cinnamon buns. My oven rack is placed right in the middle of the oven. These buns will bake between 20 and 25 minutes. I'm using a metal pan which conducts heat quicker than glass, 
So I find that my buns bake for 20 minutes exactly. You only want the tops to be slightly golden brown, and you want the dough to be just slightly undercooked. They'll finish cooking on the counter, and you want them to be soft and supple and slightly elastic -y anyway. So that's what I'm looking for in my baked cinnamon buns. The cinnamon buns have baked. Halfway through baking, I rotated the pan just to ensure even baking. Let the cinnamon buns cool between 5 and 10 minutes, and then you can ice them. If you like a perfect looking icing, wait for them to cool completely, and then slather the icing on top. It's a great time to subscribe, like, share, comment. All the recipes on my channel are my own, and I'm working hard to bring them to you. I hope you enjoy this recipe for what I consider the very best recipe for cinnamon buns. Enjoy. See you again next time.